Time for your punishment. Beautiful. Let's dream. <sighs> if that's what you want. What you want? Spring is sprung. Of course, for peace. Hey everyone, Guardian E here with another Camilla Emblem Clear video in Fire Emblem Heroes, and today we're going to be taking on Dimitri, Savior King, in his very own legendary hero battle on Abyssal Difficulty. 
So we finally have one of the other three houses heads as a legendary hero. We've got Dimitri here and let's take a look at his kit. So his native weapon is very interesting and has built in damage reduction as long as his speed is above his opponents and also has a huge plus five to all of his stats during combat activated at the start of combat as long as he has above or equal to 25% HP. That coupled with the fact that he has a killer slash slaying effect it's a pretty formidable combination of things. He also has Blazing Wind AoE Special, Sturdy Impact for the A slot, um, Deflect Magic 3 for the Seal, which is a very interesting choice for him. He doesn't have built-in Distant Counter anywhere, but that is going to increase his tankiness and overall damage reduction. He has Odd Tempest 3, which is a brand new skill, which does allow on odd turns, odd number turns, that he can move one extra space. So he's an infantry unit that can move three spaces, which has a self-activation, which is pretty unique. So Atrocity allows him to basically have a mini Draconic Aura every time he attacks and meets the condition of Atrocity, and then furthermore has a nice little smoke effect combination of minus five to all stats and plus one to special cooldown count to, uh, to his enemies. So it's definitely a powerful combination of smoke skills basically built into his B slot. So Dimitri's pretty stacked. He's got a lot of good stuff on him, and uh, so he, he's definitely a threat to watch out for. The map layout is exceptionally interesting. It starts you out split up as you can see here. You have two uh, two units in the center and then uh, one unit on the left and one unit on the right. So they're broken up at the start and then also there's deceptively small space here for maneuverability. It's very very claustrophobic. Then putting the two pillars here that are unbreakable as well as the trenches makes it, it makes your movement capability exceptionally limited on this map. So that's certainly a hurdle to overcome, but it's not quite as bad as you would think. For flyers in particular, it, it is pretty limiting in terms of overall maneuverability, but at the same time, you can use it to your advantage to funnel certain units in, and I would say that overall, the reinforcement combination really isn't that bad. I would also say that the enemy is pretty aggressive on this map, relatively so. They do march forward, engage, the reinforcements are aggressive, Dimitri himself advances very quickly, so all of those things means that you could very easily be overwhelmed, but I think the composition of the enemies makes it a little bit more manageable, as well as the actual map layout. So. Um, as you can see here, a lot of there's a lot of guard. Um, you notice that the, the Axe Knight and the Sword Knight over here have, both have not only um, dull skills, but also Guard Axe and Guard Sword Plus, so limiting the ability for the enemy to, or for your forces, I guess, their enemy, um, to have special cooldown reduction. Um, like this Lance Fighter also has a dull close skill. And then you've got this Troubadour over here that interestingly has the double Savage Blow plus Pain Plus combination. It's a tried and true for sure. So you're going to take a lot of tick damage if you allow her to attack. And of course she does have uh, Dazzling on her weapon, which means you can't counter attack her. Although it is interesting to note that she doesn't have Wrathful, which means that you're not going to really be taking much direct damage from her. It's really going to be centered around the tick damage. You got Panic Ploy and Panic Ploy on the Sword Knight and the Axe Knight, also with 99 HP. And then you start with the Green Thief over here that has some pretty nice offensive stats, as well as Rogue Dagger and Death Blow 3. Uh, no seal, though. So again, it's I think the enemy composition is a little bit more manageable for an Abyssal level map in general. The, the skill sets are uh, more manageable. The stat lines are a little bit more manageable. At least it seemed that way. So let's take a look at the Camillas themselves and what adjustments we made for this map. We'll start with Vanilla Camilla. Uh, she's merged at plus 10, speed asset, has Camilla's Axe with Special Refine, Reposition, Draconic Aura, Distant Counter, Renewal, Hone Flyers, and Chill Attack 3. Didn't actually make any adjustments to Vanilla Camilla this time around. Next up, we've got Spring Princess Camilla merged at plus 10 with 5 Dragon Flowers and with a speed asset. She also has Summoner Support. Made a bunch of adjustments to Spring Camilla for certain situations. She's got Gron Raven Triangle Adept still, Reposition for the Assist. Her special, we swapped it to Blazing Flame to give her an AoE special. Got Lancebreaker 3 for the B slot, Goad Flyers, and Deathblow 3 for the seal. These are all just situational adjustments to allow her to do certain amounts of damage during certain uh, certain phases and certain initiations. So, so she is very pivotal and critical for this battle, and then making these adjustments just made her that much more effective in this particular fight. Next up we have Adrift Camilla, Flower of Fantasy Camilla, merged at plus 10 with an attack asset, Native Book of Dreams, Reposition, Draconic Aura, Attack Res Bond 3 for the A slot and for the seal, doubling up on that bond skill, Red Tone Breaker 3 for the B slot, and Goad Flyers for the C slot. For me. 
me. And finally, we have Brave Camilla, Light of Noor Camilla, merged at plus 10 with an attack asset, five dragon flowers, has her native Sangreether, has Miracle for the special, has attack speed push four for the A slot, Wrathful Staff for the B slot, Goad Flyers for the C slot, and Renewal three for the seal. And we get to test out the new Rescue Plus, which does come in handy uh, in this particular battle. So we can we can have fun with that toy there. So despite the numerous reinforcement, the strategy itself is pretty straightforward. It was really just kind of picking off the enemies as they approach and being in a situation on the enemy phase to be able to either severely damage the oncoming troops uh, or bait them out or be able to just kill them outright. So right out of the gate, two very, very easy kills are the Lance Fighter right here, as well as the Axe Knight right here. We're going to be able to use the Lance Breaker on Spring Camilla to make sure to ensure that double and take out the Lance Fighter without any problem at all on player phase. And then over here with the Drift Camilla, we're going to have to activate her Bond skills in order to get this kill. So we're just going to shift uh, Vanilla Camilla up here so that a Drift Camilla does get those Bond skills and is able to take out the Axe Knight as well. Uh, we've got both of these, everybody basically in range of the Troubadour, but again, the Troubadour doesn't do damage outright, she just does a lot of chip damage, so I'm willing to take that at this point, especially this early in the battle. Uh, and at this point, we're just also going to shift Brave Camilla up so that she's not stuck there in the corner and won't get cornered by the Sword Knight. So there we go, and then of course the Dagger Unit, the Rogue Dagger Unit, is going to go ahead and attack Brave Camilla as well. Uh, but she is going to be able to tank that without any issue and be able to retaliate, which is very, very nice, which will chip the Green Thief down. And then, the, again, the Troubadour will also make an advance. So we're perfectly positioned at this point to take out both of these threats. As far as the reinforcements are concerned, the Red Mage over here is a threat, does have Rotter Blade Plus, Life and Death, as well as Odd Attack Wave and Even Attack Wave, meaning that regardless uh, of which wave, which phase, which round you're on, this Red Mage will be able to self-activate and self-boost their Rotter Blade Plus, and with the Life and Death means that uh, they're going to do considerable damage. You've got the Bowfighter over here with Shining Bow Plus, and then they also have Attack Defense Push 4, Mystic Boost, Savage Blow 3. Yeah, that's an okay kit. Really, the threat being that they're just an archer in general, which is certainly means that they have effective damage against our Camillas. We've got the Axe Dragon over here with Brave Axe, as well as Attack Defense Bond 3. Got Guidance for some shenanigans, as well as Aerobatics for some movement shenanigans. And she's got Guard Bearing 3, which is one of the newer uh, Flyer exclusive skills, one of the new toys for Flyers, where she essentially takes uh, some damage reduction in the first initiation against her on enemy phase. So, like I said, these are the two main threats, and we just want to eliminate them as the rest of the forces make their approach. We'll use Spring Camilla to take out the Troubadour here. And in the process, we're going to take a little bit of chip damage, but that's okay. And now we're just going to reposition a Drift Camilla over here so that she can take out the Green Thief. So now we're going to heal a Drift Camilla, and in the process, with that Rescue Plus, just draw her back. That's not really necessary here. But, uh, at least for this particular round, but for the next turn, it will actually be very helpful. And I'll... I'll say why. So Dimitri is starting to make his approach, as you can see. Reinforcement-wise, we've got this Green Cavalier. Behind him, Grand Serpent Plus, Iceberg. Got Attack Faint, as well as Rouse Attack Res 3. Got Speed Defense Ruse 3, as well as Distant Defense 3. We've got another super tanky armor that spawned up here, the Lance Knight 99 HP. Also has Wary Fighter, as well as Fortress Defense Res 2, and Barrier Lance Plus. Uh, attack speed gap three so again and miracle um, so again pretty pretty tanky at this point we just want to fall back in enemy phase the biggest threats on the opposing team so we're going to accomplish this by using rescue plus again by drawing back the uh, drift camilla over here and allowing her to initiate on the sword knight we're also just going to shift over here to make sure that uh, the make sure that spring camilla is in the range of the bow fighter as well naturally with gron raven and triangle adept she is going to be able to tank and kill on enemy phase and now a drift camilla has all of the buffs that she needs to be able to, to do considerable damage on the sword knight on player phase so she's going to do that unfortunately doesn't secure the kill here but that's okay the sword knight's going to move to the side which will allow the red rotter blade user to initiate on a drift camilla and uh, she'll do a lot of damage, but she's also going to die for her troubles. So that's two big threats down, uh, one of the archers and the red 
tome user. And now Dimitri is continuing to make his approach. We've got this sword fighter that appeared off the side here. Fire Sweep, Sword Plus, as well as Dull Ranged. Again, talking about a lot of dull skills on this uh, on this map in general to obviate any activated buffs on your team. So certainly a lot of Fire Sweep in this reinforcement wave. Got Life and Death 3, as well as a Double Poison Strike and Distant Guard 3. So we're just going to eliminate the Bowfighter right now by using Brave Camilla. Easy peasy, just take him out. He is a big threat against our team. Uh, we're going to actually, at this point, initiate on the Axe Dragon. So, Dimitri has, it's currently an odd turn. So, he has Odd Tempest 3 activated. Now, on the following turn, he is not going to have Odd Tempest 3 activated, so he's going to have a normal 2 movement range for infantry. We have Spring Camilla here with Blazing Flame at the ready, so we're just going to use that on the Axe Dragon right here to eliminate her, and in the process, do some considerable AoE damage to Dimitri as well. There we go. We take her out, we reposition her to safety, um, and at this point, again, Vanilla Camilla is technically in the danger zone, but that's just because Dimitri has extended range, which he won't have on the following turn. Now we have a Drift Camilla in the range of the Green Cavalier here, which is perfect, because she has high enough res, especially with the Bond skills, to be able to tank that and enemy phase and take him out. So that is perfect. Dimitri continuing to make his approach, now within within his thrusting range, but what we're going to do is essentially gang up on him. We're going to use Brave Camilla first to chip him down a bit, and then we're going to finish him off with Spring Camilla here. There we go. The uh, the Sword Knight over here, we're going to finish the job with the, against the Sword Knight with a Drift Camilla. She took him down to 7 HP, and now she's going to finish the job here. Uh, and at this point, we're just going to fall back out of the range of the Sword Fighter, just so we can kind of regroup and uh, and do the damage that we need to to take him out. Don't really have to worry about the Lance Fighter way up here all by his lonesome, because it's going to take him a million years to reach us. And, and at this point, we're just going to go into T-Formation. We're going to use Brave Camilla to go ahead and eliminate the Sword Fighter on player phase. And we're going to get ourselves ready to take out the Lance Fighter on the next turn. There we go, he makes his approach. Now, of course, the Lance Fighter has Wary Fighter on him to prevent doubles, but uh, we, of course, have Lance Breaker on Spring Camilla, but she just has, she's under 50% HP, so it's not active. So we're just gonna do a little a little healing on her to get her back up above 50% HP. Lance Breaker is active, and now she can double with impunity against the Lance Knight on player phase and take him out. And there we go. So that is it. That is the strategy that I employed with Camilla Emblem to clear Dimitri, Savior King, in his very own legendary hero battle on Abyssal Difficulty. Let me know in the comments below what strategies and teams you ended up using to clear this Abyssal level challenge. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really, really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you're all staying very safe, secure, and united out there, and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's protect those skies.